Hello there and welcome you awesome viewers. My name is Jakob Hake. I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. Now I know this video looks long, but it's kind of a two-parter, even though it has many more chapters. Now, I designed this first part of the video for those of us that have TikTok attention spans. So it's a roundup of everything that Nambu is. And later on in the video, there's a full in-depth patch creation session where I'm showing you parts of the synth and how you can build something really rich and complex sounding. So, Numbu is a semi-modular FM synth, and there's a ton of stuff going on under the hood. It's got six operator slots, which can all be switched out with six different types of modules, whereas four of them are generators that produce sound, and two of them being processor types that process sounds. So you've got the FM operator module, of course, with all the bells and whistles. There's a basic oscillator module with four types of waveforms. Now, this one is pretty straightforward, but it does have some interesting dials for tweaking the waveforms. And I especially like the drift in the pitch section, because with it, you can make stuff sound really analog-like. Then you've got the noise module, which gives you an ability to produce any types of noise. Thanks to the filters, it can make anything from white to brown to blue noise. And on top of that, it has a degrader module that allows for digital noise. And on top of that, you can add fluctuations. And on top of that, it's got an impulse module too. And you can even repeat the impulse sound. So it's not just a click sound that you add. Now, lastly, there's the texture module, which basically works like a basic sample player. Now, you cannot load your own in here, but it is filled with 128 short percussion-like sounds. And these can be set to either repeat, loop, or just play as one-shots. Now, there are two more modules left, and these are the processor ones, meaning you run signals through them, and you set that up in the routing matrix. One of them is a filter module with seven different filter modes, including low-pass, high-pass, band-pass, and notch filtering. Now, the final module is the most interesting one, because it's the resonator module, and this one adds 
car plus strong synthesis to the part. This can be used for all kinds of things and it's something often used for string synthesis. It is my favorite one because, well, I'll show you later on in the video if you have the attention span longer than a TikTok user, then you can check the uh, in-depth patch creation tutorial I'm doing. I'm using this module to produce something, well, interesting. Now all of these generators have easy modulation setup through a something I love, a pop-up menu. And you can identify modulation points by looking for these mod buttons underneath knobs. Now all of the modules are routed and mixed through the routing matrix down here. And even if you're not using FM operators for producing FM synthesis, you can still route modules into one another. So if you're routing a signal into the oscillator, texture and or noise module, you're still getting AM synthesis out of it instead of FM synthesis. It's really well thought out and you can even modulate all of the points inside the routing matrix too. Now, if you don't wanna fill too much with the matrix, then there are of course some pre-made algorithms in a list to choose from. Now, when it comes to modulation options, there's a lot of them. You got a bunch of sources and all of them are deep with features. There are four LFOs and one of the features I love the most is the time scale setting. So if you want to work with really slow LFO cycles, no problem, just set the scale to long. If you want to sync it to a BPM, set it to tempo. There are also mod envelopes that are just as deep as the operator amp envelopes. They're curvable, you can make really long times. Yeah, they're insane. And on top of this, you've got two modulation step sequencers with an added feature that I like, the ability to set the envelope shape for steps. So many options. Now, you also have two keyboard options for keyboard scaling and velocity scaling, and those two have extra added features that you don't normally find in synths, like being able to make sounds switching tone depending on how hard you press notes or where on the keyboard you're playing. And it doesn't stop there because it goes on. You have a global pitch section, which is deeper than expected, but very much appreciated. If you want to make drunk sounds easily, this section takes care of that in an instant. Then there are three effects, a chorus, a delay, and a reverb. And it keeps going from that. You see, there are some hidden processes right here in the preamp section, where you've got a preamp, a compressor, and an equalizer, and lastly, a saturator. And if you look close, there are even routing modes for the EQ and comp, which I think is very neat. And on top of all of this, there's also that Iceworks signature arpeggiator. So it's a ton of synth for very little money, well worth its price. It's deep, it has lots on offer, great sounding effects, and it's easy to add movement through modulation thanks to the mod pop-up menu. Now the DIY nature of Nambu is why I like it so much. Anything can be an operator basically. And that's something I stole from one of the viewers of this channel who wrote that in a comment that I can't find anymore. But yeah, being able to use anything as a generator and then route it through all the various modules, add AM synthesis over here, FM synthesis over here, filter it, run it through a resonator, mix all signals together. I can't even begin to tell you how much fun I've had with this thing. And this is why Numbu is my number one synth of 2022. And yeah, with that, the um, TikTok attention span section of the video is over. So all of you who don't have any patience, bye-bye. Anyone else who wants to see some deep patch making with Numbu, keep watching. Okay, so the first thing we really need to have a look at is the routing matrix, because if we don't get this right, we're gonna have a hard time using the synthesizer. Now, the way that signal flows inside the matrix is from top to bottom. Also, the outputs are handled at the bottom. You can see that it says out here. Well, if you can't hear any audio, it's most likely because you haven't pulled up any knobs at the bottom row here. 
Now to do FM synthesis or AM synthesis or to route a signal through a processor like the filter module and or resonator module that you can find up here in the operator type, well, you do that from left to right. So if we wanted, for instance, to do a little bit of subtractive synthesis here, well, we would have to use an operator slot below A. So we can use B, for instance. We go to B here, we open up the operator type and choose filter. And now we have to make sure that we route this correctly. So I'm gonna turn down the volume completely for A here, and I'm gonna turn up the volume for B because this is where the signal is gonna come out from after A has gone through B. And to route A into B, well, we just look at the letter B here and we can see a little line here. And so it's this knob. Now sine waves aren't really good for filtering, so I'm gonna go to the first operator slot here and just do something with this. That's gonna be easier to filter because there's more harmonics in that waveform. So now we go to B, which is our filter slot, and A is going through B and then out to the output. Now we can actually start filtering this. However, let's say we wanted to do some FM synthesis. Well, we can continue down the chain here and go to operator slot C. And in here, we already have an FM operator. And so what we're gonna do now is just pull down on the volume for B here, pull up the volume for C so we can hear that one. And right now, it's not being FM modulated. And to do that, we have to route a signal into it. Now, since we're in C, we have two operators to use. We can either use A or we can use B. And what I want to do is use B. Now by default, I always pull down operator volumes for all other operators when I'm working with a specific one, because it's easier to hear what you're doing and what's happening with that new operator. But we don't have to. If we just wanted to add in the signals from the other operators, we just have to turn the volume for them up in the output row here. Well, that's how you use the routing matrix, and it doesn't really stop there because if we go here where it says level, right underneath it, it says mod. And if we press that, well, it turns out that we can modulate every point in the matrix. Right, so those are the basics, and now we can start building our very complex patch. And we're gonna start from scratch. Okay, so we're gonna build a pad type sound. And for the foundation, we're gonna be using FM synthesis. And it's gonna be a very almost simplistic setup. We're just gonna route A into B, and this is what we get. Now here, I wanna highlight something. You see, there's this one thing you can never really get away from when it comes to FM synthesis, and that is the more operators you have, the more envelopes you have to work with. It's just a fact of FM synthesis, and it's also what makes FM synthesis so powerful and how it can create really unique and special sounding timbres. But in our case, we're not gonna go any further than we already have. We're just routing A into B and we're not doing any intricate settings to the envelopes. And what I'm about to show you next is actually a way of kind of circumventing what FM synthesis is good at because it speeds up work with envelopes by allowing you to kind of copy or duplicate settings across envelopes. Now, since this is gonna be a pad sound, we're gonna need some longer attack times and release times. And here I get to show you the power of the amp envelope and some really neat features. So if we look here real quickly, we can see that we have a copy function where we can copy envelope settings from one into another. We also have a swapping feature where we can swap out settings from one into another and vice versa. And then we have my favorite one, which is the grouping. And here we can see we have group one, two, and three. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this to group one here, and then I'm gonna go to operator B and go into grouping and add this to group one. Now, if I do a setting in here by pulling up the attack and I go back to A, we can see that the same setting has happened there. So everything you do on an envelope in a group, well, all other envelopes in that group will also receive that treatment. Receive that treatment? I'm, I'm speaking so weirdly, I'm Swedish.
I like what we got in the envelope right now, and so we're gonna keep it like that. However, there is this one more thing about the envelopes you should check out, and that is we actually have a curve setting here where we can, with the scaling, curve all of the slopes in the envelope. And what's cool is that, well, if we put it like that, and I go to release two here and I do this, you see what we can do here? That's some pretty interesting ways of curving stuff. And I just absolutely love that. But we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna have any curves. I'm just gonna keep them linear. All right, so here's the drawback of doing it this way. When you're copying envelope settings across the board like this, when you're doing FM synthesis, you're gonna get a static sound. There's not many things in here moving right now, but there are other ways of getting stuff to move in here. And we're gonna do that. We're gonna add some modulation to one of the operators. So what we're going to do is to open up the modulation settings for the width and we're going to add LFO modulation. Now that's a nice effect, but it's going too quickly. So we're going to go to the first LFO in our modulation section. And here there's a bunch of stuff we can do. We have an LFO section, we have a sync section, a rate envelope section, and then modulation level here. Now in the first section here, we can switch out the waveform, but I want to use the sine wave. With the waveform knob, we can skewer the waveform like this. We can make this a monopole, but I want it to be bipole. And here comes the setting we actually want, the rate. Right now it's going too fast. And as you can see, there are three different types of time ranges. And then you have one where you can lock it all to tempo. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the medium one because here we have up to 10 second cycle for the LFO or down to one second. So if we keep it in the middle here around four seconds. We're getting some nice width movement for this FM operator up here. But right now the face is synced to the key presses of the keyboard and I don't want that. I want them all running freely so we're gonna switch it over to free. And that's basically it for our foundation part. Next, we're gonna move on to the texture part. All right, so we're gonna start building on the texture part of the sound. And to make sure we can really hear what we're doing with the texture, we're gonna pull down the volume for operator B here and turn it up for the next one we're gonna use. Uh, let's choose operator C for this. And we've got an FM operator in there right now. So let's go over to C and switch this out. And we're gonna switch it out to a very interesting module, which is the texture module. Now, this one is basically a rompler or a sample player. You cannot load your own in here, but it's got a list of 128 different types of percussion noises in here, which makes this very suitable for making drum sounds and other things like that. Now, we're gonna use it to make a repeating, texturized, weird noise and then send it through something to make it melodic. So if you look here, we can see that we have different textures. Now, if you tweak this knob, it's gonna be hard hearing what you're doing. That's why Satoshi has put these little arrows here on the side so we can go through the list slower. And I think we're gonna use that sound only we're gonna make it slower. So we're gonna go to the pitch section here and we're gonna select a very low octave. And as you can hear right now, when I play notes, it's doing one shot. So it's just playing the sample. We want this to repeat. So let's go to repeats. And select the slowest time we can. And now we got it repeating. However, this is very, very boring. We want to build an interesting texturized pad here. So we don't want it to repeat in a machine-like way. So let's add some modulation to the repeat here by opening up modulation and adding some modulation from LFO1. And I think that sounds more like I want it. Now, there are some more things we can do. We can add a delay, we can choose some different trigger options, and we can also change the start time for the sample.
Now here comes the fun part. We're gonna turn this texture into something more melodic, and we're gonna do it with a resonator. So we're gonna pull down the volume on C and pull up the volume on D and make sure that we route C into D. Now we can go over to D, it's got an FM operator selected, and we're gonna go in here to the list and choose resonator instead. Now add feedback. And now it starts sounding interesting. However, right now our sound sounds gated because we haven't done anything with the envelopes. Well, we could just start tweaking our envelopes or we could copy the settings we did from A and B. And I think we should do that, but change them a little bit. So we're gonna copy the settings from B and as we can see, it's grouped in the same group as the other ones, but since we want this to be different, we're gonna add this to another group. We're gonna put it in red instead. And then if we go back to C here, which contains our texturizer, we're gonna add that to group red also, group three. And now both D and C have their own group. And so now we can do changes to these envelopes without worrying about them being changed for A and B. Why did I choose group three instead of two? I don't know, I do quirky things sometimes. I realized this when working on the video and instead of re-recording half of the video, I'm just adding this little extra bit here. So let's add a little bit more time here for the attack, a little longer release time for all of this. And so now it takes longer for this texturized melodic sound to actually enter into our pad here. And then it also takes it longer to dissipate. But I'm not so sure I like the pitch quite yet. So let's fiddle around with the pitch for this sound. We go to D where we have our resonator and let's up it an octave. I like how that sounds, but there's too little movement right now. I want some more movement and there's still stuff we can do, like changing the color of the resonator. As you can hear there, when we moved the color around, we got it to sound almost glistening, almost shimmering like. So let's go to the mod section here. And if my memory serves me right, then we're already using LFO 1 for something else. So we're gonna use LFO 2. Let's go down to LFO 2 here and just skewer the waveform a little bit. And then we're gonna pull down on the rate here to make it slower. It makes it way more interesting, but we're only getting a second of cycle here. So I'm gonna change the range to medium. And now we have up to 10 second cycles, but I want like maybe three seconds of cycle. And that's pretty much it for the texture part of the sound. Now, what we're gonna do next is to mix these two signals and then add a filter. All right, so mix and filtering. Now there is this one thing I always do in Numbu, and that is I always add a filter to the last operator slot. So even though it is an FM synth, I always end up doing subtractive synthesis. I just can't help it. So we're in F slot, we're gonna switch out the FM operator type to a filter module. And inside here, we can see that we have a bunch of new knobs, but we've got cutoff over here, a resonance over here, and a drive control over here. Now, if we open up the filter type, we can also see that we have a wide selection of filter types. Right now, a two pole filter has been selected, but we also have a three pole filter, two different types of four pole filters, a bandpass filter, a high pass filter, and lastly, a notch filter. 
Now we're not gonna switch it over. I wanna keep the two pole filter because I really like that filter type. So now we just have to route our signals in through the filter. So we make sure we pull up the output for F so we can hear what's coming through there. And then we add the FM operator if we follow F back to B here. And then add D. But now we have that same problem that we always have when we do this, we don't have any nice envelope movement. So we're gonna stick in the filter operator here, make sure we copy settings from the last one we did, which was the texture, so from D to F, but I wanna switch the group type here to yellow. That way we don't have to be worried if we do any changes in here that they're gonna carry on over to the other ones. I'm gonna lengthen the attack lengthen this attack, lengthen this release and this level and this time. That's already sounding really, really nice to my ears, but it's gonna sound even more interesting when we finally add some effects, but we're not quite done yet because there is one operator slot left and I wanna add a bit of drunkenness to this sound. And there are multiple ways of doing this, but we're gonna begin by going to slot E here and switching out the operator type to an oscillator type. Now in here we can choose between four different waveforms and what I'm gonna do is select a sine waveform and then some would say, why didn't you just stick with the uh, FM operator? Well, the FM operator doesn't have this right here inside the pit section, drift. So if I do this, I pull down the filter so we can only hear E, if I pull that up. If I up the octave here and add drift, listen to this. You can hear how it moves around weirdly, right? So we're gonna keep that drift there and we're gonna add this signal very, very lightly into our patch pull down on E here, we're gonna pull up F again, and now we're gonna mix this in with the other sounds. Now, we're gonna do something more. We're gonna switch this matrix over from level to mod, and we're gonna select the modulation options for this knob where we're sending E into the filter and add some LFO modulation to it. And right now it's going too fast. So we're gonna go to LFO four and make it go slower. And first I'm gonna switch it over to a medium range so we have even more time, longer cycle to work with. And right now we got like three seconds here or something. Yeah, let's work with that. You can hear it just come in slightly and let's do it even slower. So we're going down to about five or six seconds here. And some of you might have noticed that there is this one problem we have, and that is we haven't done anything with the envelope shape for this oscillator, this drunken oscillator. Well, we're gonna do something really simple. We're gonna open up the group and add it to the same group as the filter one. And so group two it is, and there we go. And so all we need to do now is to add a bit of final touches to this. All right, so now we're gonna add some effects and some finishing touches. And the first thing we're gonna do is to continue making this sound a bit drunk. And we're gonna start with the pitch section right here. Now we're gonna add vibrato to it, but right now I can already see just from the rate, it's running way too fast. And if I pull this up, this is what it sounds like. And that's just way too fast. So we're gonna open up the vibrato settings here and go down with the range to medium and put it to maybe, a, I don't know, three second cycle. Yeah. 
As you can hear, I'm only doing a slight wobbliness of the pitch there to just make it slightly drunk. Now you also have a pitch envelope in here, which has a bunch of settings too, but we're not gonna use that. Next, we're gonna add a chorus just to widen the sound a little bit. Right, and next we're gonna add a delay and increase the drunkenness by modulating the delay tail time. So we're gonna open up the delay and in here you can see there's a bunch. You even have a filter in here which can also be modulated. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the time here. And what I'm gonna do now is to add modulation for the delay tail time. That sounds really nice. And the last thing we're gonna do is, well, drench it all in reverb, but we need to do some changes first. We go into the reverb and we increase the size, we increase the time, we remove a little bit of high dampening so we have more of the higher frequency stuff staying along in the tail. And I'm gonna make sure that the tail is heard more than earlier reflections. And I'm gonna pull down a little bit on the low pass filtering. And now with all of those settings done, all we need to do is to add the reverb. What do you think? It's a pretty nice sound, isn't it? Well, when you've sat down and worked for this long on a patch, make sure you go to the file browser, open it up, go into user, add a folder if you haven't already, and I'm gonna add a folder called tutorial folder. And then I'm just gonna enter this folder, press this plus sign here, number one preset. Press okay, and there we go. Our hard work saved. Now I feel like I've left some loose ends because I haven't really gone through all of the things you can do inside the vibrato section or inside the effect section and I hardly touched upon what can be done inside the preamp and I didn't do much with the modulation either. And you know, I didn't even use the amp LFO over here which is just as rich and deep as the modulation LFOs. If you look at this, you can expand this thing and What's even nicer with this one is that you can actually modulate both the depth and the rate of the amp LFO with any of the other LFOs or mod envelopes if you wanted to. And on top of that, it even has a random feature which introduces noise modulation into the stream. It's just, it's such a deep synth. I just couldn't get it all into one video. Well, the more I use this synth, the more I get blown away by how good it sounds, how fun it is to use, and I just cannot recommend it enough. If you are a synth lover, and if you want something deep, expansive, DIY-y, then you have to check out Nambu. You just have to.
Now I suggest you stay tuned on this channel because I'm of course working on the top list for synthesizers coming out during 2022, which is going to be our top list. And that's about it. And if you want to keep supporting the work I do here on the channel, give me a thumbs up, comment down below. What do you think about Nambu? And is it something you want to get? Is it something you don't want to get? If it's not, I'm always interested in hearing why. And if you want to support me in a financial way, you can check out the presets I made for Timeless 3 and Trooper. And if you don't want to do that, you can send me a five over a PayPal or you can just join up on Patreon where you get nothing extra because I never have time to do extra stuff. All of my time already goes into the video. So yeah. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can check out my music. There are a full list of links down below. And if you don't want to do any of it, that's fine too. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. I can't believe I'm done with this video. It's been two months, two months. Thank you.